I'll we are it. live here on TikTok. Man, that means little introduction. Hunter Pence, San Francisco Giants legend here in the Bay. Appreciate you hopping on with us, man. Hey, thanks for having me, Evans. Great to be here. And uh, we were talking before we got on here how uh, we went through, me and, me and Lex have gone through the rabbit hole of different TV series. And uh, we've watched Frasier twice now since like the whole COVID era. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really feel like I'm in Frasier. And I used to always make fun of Belt, like, super bad. Uh, for Because Frasier was, like, his favorite show. He's like, okay. oh, I love Frasier. And I didn't know what it was because I was too young. And I was like, how does Belt like Frasier? But anyway, I love it. And now I, like, love the radio well, studio lifestyle. Yeah, we appreciate you hopping in with our, our own Frasier booth uh, here at 95.7 The Game. Appreciate everyone tuning in on the TikTok channel. Um, I mean, we got to start. I mean, with, with the weekend upcoming for you, I know it's going to be really exciting. You're going to be the 55th all-time Giant to join the Wall of Fame for everything that you accomplished with the Giants. Uh, as And I know everyone has embraced you as an individual, obviously, as a player. Um, but, I mean, can you even prepare for something like that? Or is it just you kind of get the rundown and you ride the wave? Um, you know, I, I guess you can prepare, you know. I uh, are you talking about like a speech or, or well, a speech? About... I mean, just getting ready for the for the event. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think I'm not really great at like a written speech or whatever. Um, but once again, like I'm tremendously honored. Like it's so humbling. And, and it's an, uh, I'm very excited to have the opportunity just to thank a lot of the people that I know and like. I wouldn't be where I was or able to accomplish what I did without them. And I think there's a lot of people behind the scenes. It's fun to tell the stories and let you know a little bit more about, you know, why, what made my career so special. And, and also just to say thanks and to be out on the field. And what an honor, you know, a legendary franchise, historic franchise, and a great group that I got to play with that we were able to accomplish some really cool things. So really just, uh, thrilled to to get this opportunity and to to be acknowledged in this way no doubt no doubt if you got a question for hunter please line them up comment in we will get as many of those of you as we can in much appreciate you, you tuning in here on tiktok as we get situated we get hydrated here in the 95 7 the game studios well you know you're you're definitely no uh i mean you're, you're very familiar with you know the broadcast booth of course apple tv plus doing it for the first year NBC Sports Bay Area, MLB, T, uh, MLB Network, I should say. Um, I mean, wh what's been the, the post-playing career like as far as stepping from the field to the booth and, and having a chance to see you at the beginning of this year as far as Apple TV Plus is concerned? I think you've gotten a ton better over the course of this season. But what's, what's it been like to learn sort of how to go from the player to, to the microphone? Yeah, you know... Um... I always loved baseball, obviously, and I'm very curious. So, like, the opportunity to learn more. And uh, I got a, a short stand. I got two games to do uh, in 2021. One because someone missed a flight, and I just happened to be in San Francisco. I got to call, like, a 11 a.m. game uh, <laughs> where they played the Cardinals. And then one uh, was, like, the last game before the All-Star break. I guess some, you know, they just, like, scrambled and uh, picked me up. But I was like, oh, this is really fun. And um, obviously learning the, the prep work that goes into it and what you need to do. But it's a lot similar to getting prepped for a game. It's like, what's the scouting report? What's the pitcher got? Uh, what was the offense need to do against this pitcher? What does this pitcher need to do against this offense? And then just, you know, learning from a lot of the great minds, asking the players and, and just sharing kind of that knowledge that you, you learn from many years of playing and studying the game and also knowing that I don't know a lot. So staying, staying curious. No doubt. No doubt. And I mean, as far as we're going to get into a multitude of, of things here, we talked about TV shows right off the top. I know you're a big gamer. Uh, so I kind of want to, I guess, go there. I mean, what have you been playing lately and what has really caught your eye? I mean, because you're a big Twitch streamer as well. Yeah, so uh, I was doing a lot more streaming before the broadcast got, you know, it's gotcha. a lot of work. Uh, I'm looking to still stream. Like, I used to run, like, a Magic the Gathering tournament, which was really fun, and I definitely miss that. But I don't think you, you, you can't do – I couldn't – I can't – I don't have the time to do it all. And if I want to do the broadcasting right, like, it just takes hours of prep. That's just the bottom line. Um, so uh, as far as games, though, I love that you asked this, Evan. So obviously I'm always playing Magic the Gathering. Uh, I, I got into Dota 2 recently. I'm more of a PC gamer. Okay. Uh, Apex Legends uh, I've been, you know, firing up every now and then. And then just different little games on Steam. Uh, there was one that had, like, a beta that was a while ago that was super fun because I'm a, kind of a Dungeons & Dragons guy. Okay. <laughs> super nerdy. Uh, but there was, like, Dark and Darker was super fun for a minute. So... Um, but yeah, right now I'm learning Dota 2. I'm terrible at it. Do you know anything about Dota 
Dakota? Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a PlayStation guy, so uh, okay, more, more a PC console or? gamer. No, no. But so how much time do you, do you have to put in to feel... I mean, obviously, you're not doing as much streaming now with the broadcasting, but to feel comfortable to hop on, I mean, how much how much time do you put in as far as trying to figure out these games? Um, you know, it, it just depends. I put a lot of time into Magic. Like, mm -hmm. this is, like, kind of my... Like some people will watch TV or some, you know, whatever. I've also been reading. I love to read as well, but it's my, you know, guilty pleasure, so to speak. And it's like, like if I just have some like free time to really unwind and, and refresh, it's like playing a game of magic. Like that's like an ongoing thing. It's like, you got to read a book every time a set comes out is mm -hmm. what, but I love it. I love the art, the story, and each set kind of comes to life the more you play it. Uh, but any game, like you can't just jump in and expect to be good. Like Dota 2, I'm just getting absolutely smashed right now, but <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with that. Like, cause I'm like learning. I'm like, oh, this is how I buy this item. And oh, I didn't know you could pick this up. But I like little games like that. Like I, I actually watched the whole League of Legends uh, summer championship, and Cloud Nine won the okay. championship, and Jensen brought it home. I don't know if there's any League of Legends fans out there, <laughs> but it was super hype. Like I was, I was really big fan of that uh, that whole series, and looking forward to watching World. So I'm a, I, 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 I love games like I, and Dungeons and Dragons, and just that. And that's where, like, Dota 2 and League of Legends is fun, is it's all these different, like, you can play, like, this Medusa or this other character, and I enjoy that. Well, and another big passion of yours, at least from what I've seen over the years, is um, plants and, and planting yes. trees. And I know that, at least personally, I, I have a question, a follow-up question for your personal one after this, but, you know, I saw you're with um, the Texas Trees Foundation in Texas. I know during your, your career towards the end, even the beginning, you're big into that and trying to make sure we can plant as many trees as possible around different communities. Where does that passion come from and how did, how did you sort of find that for yourself? Uh, one tree planted is another one. And honestly, I think you, like for me, I'm a meditator as well. And you just listen to your heart and like what pulls you. And like, you know, at, at the end of the day, I'm no, I'm not a scientist, you know, but we're kind of in an environmental crisis. And mm -hmm. it's like, how can you help? Trees do so much for us. You know, we're breathing in what they're breathing out. So like the more trees we can have, the cleaner the air, they, they cool us off. They, uh, there's just, it, it creates life. So I think, also, just on a, uh, I was on a trip and, and I remember hearing the story in Ireland about, uh, you know, Guinness, the, the guy who, he did a lot of philanthropic work, philanthropic work, and he planted like, at the time it was like $3 million worth of trees, which is like, I don't know, something like way more than $3 million. Yeah. And he had this ma massive ma mystical forest and I was just like, this is insane. Like I want to, pa what am I passing on? Plant trees that you'll never see grow. What am I passing on to the people behind us? Cause to me that matters to le try to leave the earth in a better place than, than we came. And so, um, i just love trees. I feel the connection. I feel like there, there's more to them than we even know. And so, uh, I want, yeah, that's where I like my heart just is like, just go plant trees. And so one tree planted is another one. We did the Texas tree foundation. Um, also I just worked with, uh, bay keepers and, and like working with, you know, keeping the, the bay clean and like what they've been able to accomplish. They kind of showed me that. So I'm hoping to raise some awareness for them and, and how important it is to, you know, just make little decisions. If each one of us individually makes good decisions, uh, collectively, it gets a lot better. So uh, also now that I'm surfing, so the water obviously is somewhat of a self-interest as well. And you start seeing how important it is to have clean water and let's not, you know, take it for granted. No doubt. Well, the follow-up to that is, uh, I have a friend of mine who works in a nonprofit here in the city. One of his jobs is planting trees around the city. And so he actually gave me a sequoia seed, uh, for those of the redwood tree, California state tree. And I'm just curious as someone who's had plenty of experience in this department, like what is sort of the the process for you know planning and making sure that that seed hopefully becomes you know a, a giant sequoia yeah so this is where i like leave it in the hands of the professionals sure. it's like so um oh there's another one friends of the urban forest was another one i planted with and i remember i remember um i it was actually my valentine's gift from alexis because she knew that i loved like planting trees so i'm like tamping this thing doing all the digging whatever and they're like they're coaching me i'm just doing the physical work because that's what the one gift i have and the, this 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 uh, dad and his his daughter came out and they just wanted to thank us because we we're just planting a tree in front of their house and they're like hey <laughs> thank you for this work so that was cool but um you know whenever we did uh, the event um 
at Golden Gate Park with uh, with One Tree Planet on Earth Day. They had all of these you know people that do it for a living that like picked out the spaces. We just did the work of cleaning it up, and they've you know they've raised the trees. There's different tree farms and stuff. So it is a lot of work and takes a lot of focus. Especially you can't just like plant a tree and then disappear. So there's there's professionals looking out for it, and this is where you also can you know I like look to like donate money, the things that I do have um, to help that out. No doubt, no doubt. Well, I know we're gonna get to. The hard hitting baseball questions in just a little bit, but we got well, one. The, the first, the first question is really hard hitting. Hard hitting first question. Yeah. Your most embarrassing moment on the field. Uh man, I've had a lot of them. <laughs> I mean, just look at my uniform. <laughs> uh, but by the way, do you do you think that if you were coming up in the game now that someone would try and and change some of the things that that made you the special player that you are? You know, possibly, and and at the, you know, I, I think even when I was coming up, people were trying to change me. You know, I was told a thousand times to slow down, and you can't run around with your hair on fire, and I was just too stubborn to listen. Like I was like, I'm here for you know a good time to, you know, to win as much as I can. I'm not here for a long time. I'm not like holding anything back. Like I'm giving everything I have, and that's all I knew. I didn't understand how to slow down, which I do. You know, I just wasn't wise enough at the time, but. You know, it, it still was like it was where I was and it was what I had and I was going to give everything I had. So people were trying to slow me down. I just didn't understand it yet. Gotcha. Well, I mean, speaking of moving fast, I know personally I do in the morning because I'm a big coffee person. I believe you are too, correct? It's a fact, baby. Caffeination. <laughs> Caffeination sensation. That's what caffeinate. we do. So, I mean, how did like... When did you first, one number one, start drinking coffee, but then what do you drink now? How do you sort of start your day? What's your routine? I know you said you meditate. Um, take us through some of your, your early morning routine. So it, obviously I'm kind of traveling a lot now. So sometimes I'm in Houston, sometimes I'm in, you know, Newport Beach, sometimes I'm here in San Francisco. And so it's going it, to, it's going to ship, but there's coffee is guaranteed every morning. Yeah. And, and uh, it's a, it's a mix of different local roasters wherever I'm at or pineapple labs, you know, uh, Lexi and, and myself, we have that coffee company. So we drink a lot of our coffee. We also go to different shops. So we love, you know, the coffee movement in San Francisco. We love Andy town in San Francisco. There's so many great ones. Um, you know, in Houston, obviously blacksmith coral sword, um, there's Catalina. So just tons of like, I like checking out the local roasters. And then if I'm going to a different city, I'll, I'll, I'll check out what they have there. Um, but yeah, the morning routine, um, it's at least a pot of coffee to get started, I'll just, <laughs> whether it's, you know, most likely pineapple labs and, uh, it's rotating monthly. So it's a different coffee. I don't know if you've tried it. We got to get you some, if you have it, I need to, I, I yeah. take my coffee black. So I'm, I'm okay. very, me very too, simple. me too. And it's going to taste really good because, uh, everything's sourced. It's, uh, ethically and transparently sourced. And our guy that goes to all the farms, David Buer is, he's a legend. He's really good. So he's always curating really great coffees and helping us a lot. Awesome. We got one. Yeah. Um, somebody said, I didn't see their name, but is Bochi as cool as he seems? Bruce Bochi, is he as cool as he seems? He is cooler than he seems. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is just a legend. And, uh, the, uh, like, just, uh, he, he brightens a room. He just impacts a room. He always has something witty to say that makes you chuckle. And, like, and, he, and his timing is immaculate. And I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, like, his presence is, is huge. And, and it fills the room. And he just... Um, he just like is one ahead. Of, he's always just one ahead of whatever's going on, and and just uh, nails it. He just yeah. finds a way to give the right message at the right time, and he's just a man's man. Well, you you've had some experience in giving messages at the right time, as far as the playoffs are concerned. I mean, like especially as someone who was was there in 2012, your first season, and moving on. Like, how do you sort of? get the confidence to be able to step in in a playoff situation. I'm sure everyone knows what we're talking about. Your famous pregame speech, game three, Cincinnati Reds down 2 nothing, and you inspire the team to you know, go on winning 10 innings. You guys go on to win the championship. But like, where do you get the confidence to be able to step in and say, hey, this is what we need to do today, and I got to get us going? Well, it was not that at all. It wasn't like, hey, I got to do this. I got to make this happen. Yeah. No, it was it was a collective effort, and it was uh, we had a lot of great leaders. And uh, I think the story's been told a lot. It was like Javi, Scudero, Wilson, mm -hmm. um, you know, Buster, Affel. We're, they're like, if we don't say something, we're dead. 
and uh and so i we just kind of picked everyone's brain and it was like what what's the message we want to send like mm -hmm. what matters to us because i don't want to go home like and and that was basically it is it was just like i was just the voice of what all of our leaders were kind of like you know telling me to say and uh and, and with a little bit of of my own twist on it as well and um for me it was just i think you earn the right to be able to say that by playing every day, by playing well, by doing the right things. And so that's what you can speak till you're blue in the face, but if you're not like being about it, it doesn't matter. And we had a lot of leaders that cared and you can also talk if no one cares, it's on deaf ears, right? Like everyone cared and everyone was like, you know what? Yeah, I don't want to go home. And you know what, what can we control? Like make our decision and let's leave it all on the field. No doubt. Well, I, I know I just got one more for you personally. And I know a lot of fans might appreciate this answer that you have but you know a guy like Buster Posey we don't hear a ton about him we don't hear from him a whole lot but you had the chance to be in the clubhouse with him play with him for multiple seasons for a long time is there a Buster Posey story one that you could think of that kind of encapsulates the individual that he was both off the field as well as on the field just so you can kind of peel the curtain back for a few people um it's tough to really give like one story that like does that but I will say this is that Everything he, he was, he was, he's crazy smart he, and he's a crazy good leader. And he was able to juggle and know what everyone was doing and, and able to help and, and have his hand in so many more things than was really even his responsibility is because he cared. So he just genuinely cared. And he had one of the fiercest fires of competitiveness that he would never show because, you know, he was, he was always like, intentional about how he carried himself classy and calm but like there was an intense fire of competitiveness and the pain when we lost that that he felt and took on you like felt it in this invisible force that i can't explain and he just he really cared he cared about about playing well he cared about the team he cared about everyone around him and he put forth more effort than he could ever he would ever take credit for he's extraordinarily humble as well so just the ultimate leader and and did a lot for not every single one of us and like hated to lose like with a raging fiery passion wow like it was awesome <laughs> that's all i gotta say um one more um from the the crowd was yep. road stadium favorite road stadium to play in favorite road stadium to play in you know for me it was milwaukee mm -hmm. yeah I, I love that the clubhouse there like I, I, honestly if i was ever to have a man cave that was like where i would want to hang out like if we could just have a <laughs> rain delay that went all night and then we just like partied at the clubhouse it would be with rosie and and what he's put up there they have like pinball machines in the back just crazy just awesome like foods like little snack foods like leather couches it's got all the games on it's just like a really nice clubhouse. Mm, no doubt. And that's a good hitter's park, too. Cool. <laughs> well, we appreciate you, Hunter Pence, coming on here on our 95.7 The Game TikTok channel. Thanks for going down the memory lane with us. Thanks for talking about your passions, video games, coffee, plants, surfing. We hit on as much as we could, and thank you for the time, man. Thanks, Evan. Appreciate it.